I've been saying it. I mean, there's no other way to say it. There's there's six letters and it's spells out winner. That's what he is. He's won everywhere. Now, we're not winning as many games as we want, but he still fights and still leads and still plays hard. He's not perfect. Turns the ball over too many times at times, but he competes. How many, how many, how many point guards have you seen? And gets 18, 19 rebounds in back-to-back -back games and then come back with 14. Um, it's just, it's incredible. He's, like I said, I've seen it many times. Been with them for three conference finals and NBA finals and, and been with them now. And it's, he's, he does things that I've, I've never seen in the history of, I've been in this league for 30 years. And he's a winner, man. He, he fights. Like I said, he's not perfect. And a lot of times the, the geniuses want to look at the things that he doesn't do well, but they sometimes they forget about the about the other things that he does well. After a night like that, did you say anything to him? Does he have an exchange with you or anything? No, I mean I I talk to him throughout the game, just tell him what I see, and he tells me what he sees, and you know it's really conditioning. I mean he's. He wants to play 48 minutes, and I'm trying to buy him minutes here and there. I know we're trying to squeak out uh, all the possessions that we can and get good possessions and without Brad. And, and but, yeah, like I said, Russell's – Russell has – I have no problem coaching Russell, and that's how we have – we have a, a solid relationship about, you know, what what he needs to do. And the thing, the, the biggest thing that he does really is is helping our young guys how to be a pro. I mean, that's not always easy to do. And Brad's the same way. We got two veteran guards playing with really young players and three of them at times. But he's still teaching them how to be pros. That's gonna, they're, it's gonna pay dividends for many years to come. And they, they need it. They need to have good veterans. We've all heard about it and I've seen it. If you're a young player and you have some crappy veterans, you're going to have a, it's unfair for those rookies because they ended up having a short three, three year career. But with Danny and Rui and Thomas Bryant and those, these are all these young guys, even Chandler, they can, they're going to see this guy develop and, and our, our work every day. And it's not, it's not when things go well. He's, he talks to you guys when things don't go well. He's, he's, he, he shows them the right way and how to do things and how to prepare and, I can't say enough thing, good things about him, but I, I see it, and, I, and I'm, I'm happy that he's helping these young players along the way. Chase. Yeah, Scott, do you have any more information on uh, Daniel Gafford's injury? No, I don't. I mean, it didn't look good. Uh, I thought I, I, um, I just turned it. I mean, it's, it's uh, I'm disappointed for him. Because he, I mean, I'm, I'm hoping for the best. I'm really hoping for the best. Because what he brings, we don't have. We haven't had it in five years, a lob threat. He's probably had more lob dunks than, than we've had in the first four and a half years combined. And it's nothing against uh, Alex and Roll. They're just not that type of player. But they do things that he probably doesn't do well. Um, but having all three of them has been pretty good by committee. They're, they're all really, really give us good minutes. I uh, don't know. I don't know. I mean, I'm hoping for the best. I, my, I don't even want. I, I have my gut feeling tells me something, but I rather not. I just want to stay positive and hope for the best because we need what he brings, and it's it was. It's going to be fun working with him because, like I said, he's a young. He's 22 years old, and and he or I don't even know if he's that, but he's he has a, a, a promising future, and we're that's a great 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 pickup. And uh, what did you think about the debut of Chandler Hutchison? That's another. I was waiting for you guys to say that. But, um, yeah, that's, those two guys in the trade was is what we need. You know, we need we need an athletic wing. We need a, a, a really wise cutter. Russell and Brad takes a lot of attention. They have not only their two guys or their their guy guarding them, they have a lot of eyeballs on them. And, when you have when you have got your man looking at the ball, there's a time and place to cut. And what he did tonight, we haven't had that either. You can't teach that. 
uh, overnight. And but he brings that. He brings that too. I mean, I don't, I'm not sure he's going to go eight for eleven every night, but that's another great. They, those two guys are are big time players for us. I mean, I know they haven't. They didn't play a lot for whatever reason. That's none of my business. But Tommy looked at those two guys and says, "Hey, man, we can get these two guys. We're going to have to give up Troy and Mo." And and that was that was a, a good decision. And because these guys, nothing against those guys, we gave up, but. We needed those. We needed those. That type of player on both of those positions. Fred, Scott. Shockingly, I have another Russell one for you. Um, he broke the franchise record tonight for most triple doubles for any not single season for a career, for most triple doubles for any Wizard or Bullet or anyone else in franchise history. Uh, he has played only 38 games for you guys. What's what's your reaction when you hear a stat like that? Yeah, I mean, it's it's, uh, it's tremendous. I'm going to, I mean, I'm going to put it on my Twitter account, my Instagram, um, my Snapchat, my TikTok. I'm going to put it all. Am I giving up my age there? Whoever said that. Um, it's... I mean, I, I don't know, man. It's it's mind-boggling how. I mean, I'm not saying this other out of respect for your guys' job, but it's mind-boggling how you guys, not you in particular, Fred, because I'm sure you appreciate it because you 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 understand what what it what it takes to to do this every night because you've seen it. But you know, the national or the you know, it's. It's amazing what he does. You people don't realize, or they don't want to realize, because he doesn't. He doesn't kiss anybody's ass. He just he do, he plays a hard he plays a hard brand of basketball, and he doesn't he doesn't looking for your guys' approval. But Oscar Robinson was the last guy to average a double, a triple double, and he's done it three years in a row, and he's doing it again this year. And it's just, I mean, Tommy knows that we just got to keep building our team around uh, our two guys and and our young guys are going to keep developing but what he's done so far it's nothing to do it's not we're not happy trust me we're not happy winning uh the the last couple of games and we're like the season's good for us no we're we're pissed off that we're not we don't have a better record but we're going to keep fighting and but what Russell does for us is this goes beyond the goes behind this beyond the stat sheet, and he fills the stat sheet like nobody ever has done in the history of this game. He's gonna go down as one of the best point guards of all time. And his IQ is just through the top. I mean, he and he and his preparation is through the top. He's gonna watch this game and like he does every game. He probably won't tell you guys. He watches this game tonight, right when he gets home. And his wife is gonna dr drive him. You know, he's going to she she knows the game just as well as he knows the game. And and that's great to see that. But he's he wants to he wants this team to keep improving. And I like that about him. Tim. Scott, along those lines about how Russ makes this look routine. Nine years ago, there were only 18 triple doubles in the whole league. He said 16 for you guys this year, and, and you've held him out of a lot of games. Mm -hmm. What what sort of legacy? Did, I mean, his numbers are his numbers are sick. We all know that. He made the triple double, almost. He's almost made it ordinary. Like how insane is that part of his legacy? The fact that no one's ever had a 35, 14, 21 before, but he does this all the time and makes it look easy doing it. How much does that sort of add to? what he's done yeah, it's, in this it's, game. it's incredible and i and i i'm telling you the guy is a winner man i don't know how many times i'm gonna say this probably another million times in my life when i'm done you know dealing with you guys all, everybody off the court off record on record with my with my wife with my son with my daughter with my friends i tell everybody the same thing the guy is a winner and he's fun to coach because he competes every night and he wants it every night He's not perfect, trust me. And you know what the thing I love about him? He's frustrated that he's turned the ball over 4.9 4 times a game. It eats at him. He cares about it. I mean, it really eats at him. I'm surprised sometimes he doesn't have an ulcer because it eats at him so much. But he cares, and what he does, I'm telling you, it's like 
And I tell them, I said, Russell, okay, what, what's, you, 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 we have to cut down your turnovers. And he understand, he agreed. Okay, Russell, you got a, you got two, two quick shots, three quick shots every game. He understands and he's, we're, we're going to continue to build and get our team better every night. And it's sometimes it's been difficult with no practices with our young guys, but I couldn't ask for two leaders helping our young guys. But what he does is it's I'm telling you, I don't, I don't, he's going to definitely go down as one of the best point guards in the history of the game. And, and that's, Thank you. Um, it's pretty, pretty cool to see. Cause I remember many times early on, Everybody kept saying he's not a point guard. He might be a backup, backup scoring, you know, six man of the year candidate. But he knew that that didn't bother me. He was a point guard, and he's a very high level point guard and a smart point guard, very intelligent. Thank you, Scott. Yep. All right, we got time for a couple more. Matt. Yes, Scott. Another Russ one. You've seen a lot of dominant kind of complete games from him throughout his career. I mean, where does this one kind of rank? And is there something about his game when he is in control like this, that, like where you see his feel of the game kind of take place on the court? Yeah, I mean, he he's had some games like this all, quite a bit. I mean, it's, he's a Hall of Famer. He's definitely a, a Hall of Famer first ballot. You know, tonight, it was a tough game tonight. It was a mentally exhausting game tonight on – Throughout the game, we don't have the best score in basketball. Uh, that's not always easy to, to make that adjustment. We made that adjustment about, I don't know, three o'clock in the afternoon when I found out that he wasn't going to play. And that's not always easy as a, as a coach, but I knew we were going to compete. I didn't know how we were going to win the game, um, but I knew we were going to compete and we were going to be in position to to win the game, we we made a lot of good plays. I mean, Denny's shot with, you know, we're down three, or down six. That was a big bucket. We needed that to, to keep the keep this our hope alive. And then Rui, it's been fun to see Rui grow up. And he just has to keep challenging himself to keep playing with that edge every night. And he has. He's on a nice little, I don't know, eight, nine game pace. Now we got to keep building. And that's what we have to do. And now, you know, never know with um, with Gaff. Hopefully, hopefully it's not serious, but that's another guy that's going to continue to help us get better. All right, we'll finish up with Zach. Hey, I'm Coach, uh, speaking Rui. of, yeah, Rui and Russ, actually, uh, what do you think about the on-court chemistry that's developed on offense between Rui and Russ? It's been, it's been, it's been really good, Zach, really good. And it's taken time. And, and another thing is, you know, we didn't have no summer. Um, we didn't have a training camp. I don't necessarily need it, but our players need it. We had a lot of moving pieces. And I knew Rui eventually and Russell would get a connection. And to me, it's been really good. I mean, Russell sees matchups and, and Rui's taking advantage. He's not, he's not. Um, he's not bailing out the defenders. He's he's getting to his spots on the floor, and he's going to get better at even putting it to the all the way to the floor and taking it to the basket. That's a that's something that his next step of growing growing in this league is going to be. But I like their chemistry. I think it's been I think it's been great, and it's only going to get better. And and like I said, it's all on the fly. I mean, I don't even know when we last time we had a actual practice with Russell and Brad, it, it has to be at least like two months, but they've, they've, they got chemistry on the fly. And that's, if you didn't have a veteran guards, it wouldn't be, it wouldn't be as easy as it, as it looks. This was uh, legitimately one of the best games of your career. Uh, where did this come from after not playing for so long and, and you know, obviously debuting with your new team? Um, you know, I've, I've stayed in the gym. I haven't been playing. Um, but I take this extremely serious and, you know, um, the ability that I had to stay in the gym while I was out was available to me and I took full advantage, stayed in shape, stayed sharp. Um, and this is just a result of getting the opportunity to play and then me being myself. You mentioned um, getting the opportunity. Uh, I saw you sent a tweet out uh, very soon after this game. Um, can you just expound on, you know, the idea of getting a fresh start and an opportunity with a new team and you, what you want to do to make the most of it? Yeah, I mean, it's what you said, you know, uh, this was nothing other to me than an opportunity. 
you know, I, I've been I've been ecstatic even in the transition of, of being here because I understand that this team has a need and I see myself a potential to fill that need, you know, and that that from a, a personal standpoint makes you feel good, you know, and then I've been embraced, you know, by Russ, by Brad and these guys to tell me to just be myself. And so it's real easy for me just to go out there and, and do what I can. But, you know, it's nothing um, personal against Chicago, you know, that that situation made me the, the person I am right now, you know, and the player. I put in a lot of work. Unfortunately, it didn't work out, but I have no ill feelings towards them whatsoever. You know, it's just the excitement about what's to come. Uh, and I know that I'm going to have a bright future here uh, in Washington. Ava? Um, Chandler, first of all, we know that you wanted to kind of wait until you got a couple practices under you. How much time did you actually have to spend learning uh, about your teammates, their tendencies, learning the playbook and everything? So the funny thing is the plan was to practice, but uh, Coach Brooks mentioned that, you know, with the crazy schedule and this back-to-back -back coming up that we weren't going to practice today, you know? So I just, I came in and I grabbed some of the guys. We went through some of the plays. Um, I got some shots up, got a workout in, um, you know, got a pregame workout before the game and uh, decided and, and told them, you know, let's let it rip. Like, I feel like I'm ready. And obviously, you know, it's, it, was, it wasn't even about performing well, you know, that would have made me feel the way I do right now. You know, it's about the ability for me just to go out there and, and be the player that I see I can be, you know, and that would have been a win whether I went 0 for 11 or if I went whatever I did go, you know. And so there was nothing other than just me wanting to come out here and be myself on the court, be embraced by the teammates. And I was lucky enough to get a, an opportunity and, and uh, you know, Russ, I had quite a bit of assist to me, so I definitely got to get him some dinner or something. Um, speaking of rest, what was it like to watch that performance from him tonight, especially as a young guy who probably grew up watching him play? Yeah, I mean, I've been I've been blessed to to play alongside some talented players, you know, and Zach Levine, um, All Star, but with Russ, I mean, he just commands an energy, you know, that's extremely contagious and. You know, you see and you hear and you read all kinds of things about who he is as a player and as, as a person. And I knew right away when I came in here that I knew I was going to be um, not persuaded because I didn't think of anything because I knew it was all just what other people had to say. But I knew I was going to figure out who he really was. And just with being here a couple of days, I already know the type of teammate he is. You know, he cares extremely uh, a bunch about his teammates. And it just shows with his ability to be unselfish and make the right plays. And obviously, he's a heck of a talent to be able to go out there and just put up a stat line like he did tonight and carry us to a win. It's like, it's unbelievable. Fred? Hey, Chandler. Um, building off of that, Ru Russ is, there's kind of nobody who plays with that sort of spontaneity like Russ does. Uh, you have never played with him before, and I'm sure you've never played with anyone quite like that in terms of just pure style, right? So how are you in crunch time of a close game reading Russ? You know, he hit you on a cut once. What are, what are you looking for to try to figure out where to be and develop chemistry with him in time at the end of a close game? Well, I, I understand that he's going to have the, the ball in his hands at the end of the game. And, you know, and, and um, I told him, um, you know, after I hit that first three in the corner that he, that he skipped to me, I said, you can trust me. I'm going to knock that down for you, you know, and then he hit me again and I hit another one. You know, and then he hit me on a cut and I hit a little flip shot down the middle, um, a little layup. And, you know, I have an obligation to be reliable to him when he needs me to, because he's going to have the ball in his hands to make the decisions. And in order to establish that chemistry, you know, I'm going to have to show him and earn that trust. And that just comes with me just being who I am, playing with energy. You know, me and him, I think we're a lot alike mentality wise. You know, he's he's obviously a vet and he's extreme, extreme. But, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm an extreme player. I take this extremely serious, and I love to have fun. And so I can see us definitely, um, you know, adding to that cohesion and building something with that. Matt Paris. Hey, uh, You know, you mentioned that it wasn't personal with Chicago. But, I mean, how hard is it to not make it personal or to beat yourself up when you're outside of the rotation? Like, just what was your kind of your mental state like when you weren't playing and not letting it affect you? Yeah, well, um, for the record, the, the decision of me not playing for the past two months, it was it was completely up to me. 
Um, and Chicago supported me 100% in that decision. Um, you know, it was not bad. It wasn't a basketball related thing. I needed to take time personally. And um, I'll get into that when I feel like the time is right. But, you know, obviously my focus is here and now and establishing a rhythm here. But, you know, that's why I don't have any um, ill feelings because, you know, they, they made how I was feeling a priority going through a tough stretch, you know, in my life. And they were there for me and they put me as a priority. And, you know, part of the business is, you know, hey, they, they feel like, you know, a new front office, they wanted to make moves that they feel like they could use to get better. And so it's, it's probably not the last time it's going to happen. So you just have to take it for what it is. And, and when I saw the opportunity at Washington, you know, like I just was filled with emotions of excitement because opportunity is all you can ask for in this league, you know, and I feel like I have a great one here. All right. Was there something that made you feel super excited or comfortable or was it just, just a new start or was there something about here that, you know, really. Yeah, it was, it was all a bunch. I mean, I, I'm playing alongside Russ and Brad uh, and some of the pieces with Rui, you know, coming on with Gaff, you know, like having a teammate who's we're close together and we've kind of gone through our struggles together these past two years and have that relationship um, to a new place. You know, they say, uh, you know, change or success is on the other side of your comfort zone, you know, and this was just a test for me to be able to persevere and just take it in stride and just take what comes and, and I'm ready for it. Last question to Chris Soss. Hello, Chandler. Congratulations on the win and the performance as well. What, uh, speaking for Russell, what impressed you most on him on and off the court? And also, how inspired you his performance to make a step up and give it all on the court? Yeah, I mean, really off the court too. You know, I talked about the things during the game, but off the court, his presence is, you know, he's just as bright. Um, you know, coming in, getting treatments, being around. You know, when I first stepped in the gym, he grabbed me and Gaff, you know, and introduced himself. You know, this is an MVP, um, a veteran, like a perennial all-star who's taking his time to grab me and introduce himself. You know, like I should be the one going up to him and saying, you know, hey, this is, I'm here, blah, 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 blah. Like that presence is just something that I haven't experienced at this level. And it shows why he's the, the type of person and player that he is. But like I said, the energy that he brings, you know, he's going to have your back and you know, he's going to play hundred percent. So if you don't do anything, um, if you don't meet his uh, level of energy, then you're letting him down, you know, and you're letting the team down because when the best player plays as hard as he does and you're not meeting that, then there's something wrong, you know? So I just wanted to play hard and just be myself out there. Um, you know, and I understand that tonight went great. We got the win. But, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm uh, hopefully I'm here for the long haul and it's going to be the start of something, but I'm just taking it in stride, you know, and just trying to learn along the way and, and take it, take it as it comes. What was your mindset going into tonight's game? You've mentioned before when Brad is out, you feel like you have to step up and kind of make up for his absence. Was that kind of uh, your mentality tonight as well? Yeah, for sure. Um, he, he was out today, so, you know, um, I have to be aggressive. And even before the game, he told me, he told me to be aggressive. Um, you know, uh, from, a, I think we, we started good off the game, uh, beginning of the games. Uh, we are very aggressive and defensively, offensively. And yeah, even me, you know, I was, a, you know, to both, both hands, you know, I'm trying to be just aggressive. And uh, what was it like for you seeing Russ's performance tonight? I mean, for me, it's like, you know, that's why when I was growing up, you know, um, I saw him like that in the OKC. So, you know, I mean, now I'm actually playing with him. So I can I kind of, you know, it's actually crazy to me. Um, but yeah, big time, big time, you know, he's my um, growing up, you know, look up him, you know, um, he's like my, um, like a model. So, you know, it was, it was really, you know, this performance, you know, he, he did really good tonight. And, uh, you know, he actually, um, the, especially the fourth quarter, you know, when the clutch time, he made all the, you know, good plays. So, yeah. Fred? Hey, Rui. Um, I saw you uh, do the jersey swap with DeMonta Sabonis, and I know you guys are both Gonzaga guys. Mm -hmm. I was just wondering what your your relationship was like off the off the court. Oh, uh, I feel like we always hanging out. Uh, we actually, we, we didn't go the same time as school, but um, 
he always, I always looked at him, you know, um, uh, cause especially he's like, you know, he, he came from, he's from a different country and then he went to Gonzaga for like two years and, you know, uh, so kind of like the same, you know, um, same like me. So I always look at him, look at him, you know, how he been developed, like, you know, improving his games. Um, even like off season, I, I walk out with him, uh, just hanging out with him. And like, he always teach me a lot of stuff, you know, the NBA lifestyle, um, like how NBA, like, you know, just like a culture in here. So um, it's great to see him, you know, play against him, like, you know, um, I always look at him, and especially Gonzaga. You know, right now we, you know, um, we're playing a, a March Madness right now. So, um, yeah, it was good. It was great to see him. Chase, Rui, as teams uh, study your game and try to take things away from you offensively, what has the process been like trying to adjust to stay ahead of defenses and always being able to counter whatever they try against you? I mean, I don't think, you know, um, it's not, I, don't, I feel like it's not going to make any difference for me. You know, I'm just going to play my, you know, I always play aggressive, you know, offense with defense with, um, like I've been always say, uh, I'm not only like offense player, I'm a two-way player. So, you know, I, I just got to, every now I got to come out with a good energy, um, you know, no matter what, you know, I'm just going to be aggressive and yeah, my, you know, I always watch films with the coaches and stuff too. So, you know, um, and then, like, like you say, like everybody watched the film and like, you know, what my moves, like, you know, and stuff, but you know, end of the day, you know, we, I just got to play through, you know, um, so yeah, it's nothing, it's not going to make any difference. You broke the franchise record tonight for most triple doubles in, in the history of the Wizards and Bullets. And, uh, I know it is not the first triple double record you've broken, but uh, I'm just wondering what what that means to you in the grand scheme of things. Um, you know, I think one thing that I always cherish and enjoy about um, this game is that you get to go out and compete um, and play uh, every level. That's one thing I always try myself on is making sure I leave it all on the floor every single night. Um, and I've been blessed with an opportunity to be able to do that. And I don't take it for granted. Um, and along those lines, um, different records and different things may happen. Uh, but one thing I always do is uh, stay humble, stay true to myself, um, and always continue to uh, give everything I have and, and pride myself on being, uh, create some consistency uh, for my teammates. And I'm, I'm curious to get your perspective on your you put up, you know, as good rebounding numbers for a guard as any guard who's ever played the game. What what would you say makes you a good rebounder? Um, my timing, um, ability to go get it. You know, as much as people uh, talk about it, as much as people mention it and don't or don't like to mention it, um, it ain't easy to do, man. Um, but uh, always make sure that it allows me to be able to start the break, uh, get the ball and go. Uh, timing. Obviously, being athletic helps me uh, and be able to get it. But um, I don't, you know, know if anybody's better at uh, at my size at rebounding the basketball um, consistently. Ava, Russ, um, you kind of always face such straight on your course with us and everything. When we ask you about the the records you break and things like that, when people in your life congratulate you, or like when Coach Brooks talks to you about nights like this after the game, how do you respond? Uh, I'm just very thankful, man. I, you know, we got an unbelievable group of guys in the locker room, um, and a lot of times when people, um, you know, break records and things like myself, um, I don't, I, I don't deserve the credit, honestly. You know, uh, for me, I always give credit um, to the man above for blessing me with the abilities to play. And along those lines, I have so many great coaches and teammates that make my job easy and help me out because uh, it, assists don't happen. I, I can't make the shots and different things of that nature and make the game easy for me. And a lot of guys sacrifice uh, some of their own goals and some of their things they, they want to accomplish um, and, and making the game easy for myself. So I always give thanks to, to the coaches and, and, and to the staff and, to, to everybody in the organization, to my teammates, especially for allowing me uh, to go out and, and do what I, I love to do. 
and we ask you a lot about Rui, but what do you think has been the key for him in, in kind of keeping this consistency now with his level of aggression that we're seeing? Um, you said it, his, his aggression. When he's aggressive, miss or make, um, our team is better. Um, and I think he's figuring that out. And it's my job to make sure I continue to push him each and every night to be aggressive uh, because uh, when he puts pressure on the defense, it, it, it's a different game, different ball game for us. And, um, you know, you've been seeing that consistently from Rui, which has um, been beneficial for us. Thanks, Russ. Matt. Hey, Russ, at what point in your career do you feel like you had that kind of complete control of the game, the, the rebounding, the assists, when it all started to come together for you? Hmm, I don't know. Um, I always feel like I can impact the game in many ways. Um, and I always feel like uh, I'm able to do things um, that nobody else can do on the floor. Um, and I just believe that when I step on the floor every night. Um, and I don't know when that was. Um, obviously, based on the personnel I had and teams I had, I had to do different things, whether it's score more, um, you know, pass more, whatever it was. Um, but, you know, I know that I, I put a lot of pressure on myself to do everything. Um, I know that not many, many people in this league uh, do that, and I do that consistently by putting – shit ton of pressure on myself when lose to do every single thing on the floor, defend, rebound, pass, lead, assist. Um, and I just feel like that's that's my calling and I'm gonna make sure that I, I do that every night. And you are now 20 triple doubles away from breaking the all-time record. Is that a mark you feel like you can accomplish this season? Uh, I'm not sure, man. I, I don't, um, my, my, my notch, I'm trying to get to the playoffs. That's it. I don't really, you know, that stuff will come. Uh, if it comes, it comes. If it don't, it don't. Uh, but uh, what I'm worried about is making sure that we're playing our best basketball leading into uh, getting into a playoff spot. Thanks. Nathan? Hey, uh, Westbrook, congratulations on the win. Uh, I want to uh, switch gears a little bit and talk a little bit about, you know, Nipsey Hussle, given that a couple of days from now, it will mark the second year of the uh, anniversary of his passing. And this is a man who you personally knew. You know, if he were alive today, you know, what do you think he will be doing right now? And, you know, talk a little bit about, you know, just his impact just on the black community in terms of entrepreneurship. Yeah, man, you know, hustle, uh, you know, rest in peace. Um, will always, always live on, especially for me. I mean, all, always for the city of Los Angeles, um, not just for his music, but uh, for his uh, ability to be able to impact our black community, impact the underserved communities. And I know um, if he was still living, he'll be doing that at the at the highest level uh, because that's who he is. He always stayed true to who he is, um, stay true uh, to where he was from. Um, and that's the most important part about anybody, staying true to who you are and make sure you're impacting others, especially uh, where you're from. And that's something that he's always doing. And that's something that if he was living today, he will, he will continue to be doing. Christos. Hello, Russell. Congratulations on the win and the performance as well. I'd like to ask you, for four, year, four straight years, you have almost triple double figures in stats. How difficult is to establish yourself into this position to make every season triple double? And what the, how, how big is the work behind the scenes to make that, uh, that um, performance? You know, um, it's... Uh... It's pretty crazy, man, when you think about it. You know, you sit back and actually think about it and not let the negative energy seep in, not the neg negative, negative comments seep in. Uh, when it's all said and done, um, it's something to think about, you know. And I just go out and play, man. Um, you know, that's all I can tell you. I, I don't have an answer for that because, you know, I just do what I can and I try to do different things to impact winning and impact the games. It may not always end the season that I wanted to end. It may not, I may not always end in the championship, but that is, like, I, like I've said early in the year, uh, my legacy not going to be determined if I win a championship or not. Um, and that's how I feel my legacy is going to be determined um, what I've done for the game and how I use this platform to impact others across the world, impact our underserved communities, impact our uh, African-American community, impact our our school system, our financial system, closing um, these gaps in, in, in our system today, that's that's a legacy for me. And that's something that I um, cherish about this game. And that's something that I always will, will cherish about the game. And the follow up, how important for you to, to inspire your team, especially and your teammates, to be an inspirational player? 
Um, I think it's, it's important as a leader to make sure that I, I, I bring it every night. Um, to me, that's the sort of in, inspiring others to make sure you do your part. Um, and that's what I try to do every night. Uh, it may not always be the greatest nights of making shots. It may not always be the greatest nights of taking care of the basketball. But I know that uh, when I leave the floor, my teammates know that I gave everything I had. And to me, that's a part of inspiration.